Yo, what's up, family? How y'all doing? Now, let's talk about something, right? Now, this something, like, deep, right? Now, these these weird-ass U.S. citizens, slave-minded-ass people, right? Uh, these are called the sovereign citizen hate groups, y'all. That's what we're going to call everybody who go against our movement. Everybody, uh, always remember this. These are called sovereign citizen hate groups. Uh, sovereign citizen hate groups are U.S. citizens who've been brainwashed by the American Association to believe that the United States District of Columbia is 100% synonymous with the United States of America Republic, right? Now, let's just clear everything up, right? I've been, a lot of people have been sending me videos of them um, recording some of my content and say, hey, this guy's a scammer, don't trust it, listen. If I was a scammer, number one, I would never put my personal information on YouTube. Number two, this is another thing you got to also understand that anything that I speak about can be proven as facts, such as my case. Now, if any if any one of you guys want to search up my case and want to verify have I actually beat it, you can search up Orange County Clerk of Court, right? And then you want to search up court, search up court records. Then they're going to actually put the person name. So you're going to put my first name, last name, it's Taquan Williams, T-A-Q-U-A-N-E. And then you're going to go down where it said last name. You're going to put W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. You want to search and then you're going to see something. You're going to see like six charges, right? Because one of them was tickets because I got like four tickets during the time I got arrested. So you're going to see like four tickets and you're going to see my arrest. Now, once you see my arrest, you're going to see where it says close, right? And when it says close, you're going to click that docket. And the doctor is going to pull up and it's going to say jury and it's going to say uh, defendant found not guilty. And you're going to see the you can actually pull up the letter and you can get it for yourself. Now, as far as everything else, right now, when you're dealing with people who sovereign, you got to understand that you the average U.S. citizen is a damn slave. They don't understand what the fuck going on out here. If they understand the jurisdiction uh, of the of the District of Columbia in these administrative courts and they knew it was separate from. Uh, the United States Supreme Court, if they understand the difference between common law and this administrative law, it's two different things. So what we what we come to the conclusion of is that one is operating within the administrative jurisdiction, one is operating in common law. Now, this is no knock on people who choose to be U.S. citizens. You can be whatever you want, but when you try to when you trying to go against our movement, you trying to go against what we teach, you also got to bring facts. You got to bring facts. And a lot of things you guys saying is not adding up, just like rural free delivery. Let me explain to you guys what rural free delivery is. Let me spell it. R-U-R-A-L space free F-R-E-E -E, delivery, right? So rural free delivery. Let me explain. Now, you can go back to United States Postcode. You can go on their uh, website. And it's going to say rural for, rural free delivery. It's going to say those who live in farmland areas or unincorporated areas. So when people say you're using a fake address, a rural free area has never been known as a fake address. If you don't believe me, uh, go to DS11 form, right? You can search up the passport application form. It's going to ask you town, city, or RFD. RFD means rural free delivery. That means you live in a farmland or an unincorporated area. Anytime you put a zip code, that means you... Uh, uh, specifying a federal jurisdiction or federal territory. If you put all zeros, that means outside of federal territories and outside of federal jurisdiction. You got to understand one thing. Uh, the whole United States has something to do with federal territory and federal jurisdiction. Federal territory and federal jurisdiction only arise out of the zip codes, right? The like, the like how you see the brackets go and everything like that. So it go like the national aspect. So if you live in Iowa, your national um, zip code will start with a five. You live in Illinois, it start with a six. You live in Florida, start with a three, right? And so throughout those areas, that would be considered the federal territory. But federal, the federal territory is fictitious. That means the zip code. Uh, they have jurisdiction over that. But as far as the land, the actual soil will be considered a rural a rural free area. That's why if you go down state and you go, say if you live in California or if you live in Illinois, you go down to the country areas, that's considered a rural free area. It's unincorporated. It's not owned by the city. It's not owned by the town. Neither is it owned by the municipal. And what contract people into the jurisdiction of these administrative courts, right? <sighs> It's something called contract and also being a resident of the state, being a resident of the state uh, also 
is evidence that you are subject to the statutory jurisdiction. When you understand administrative law and understand administrative courts, they only operate under jurisdiction. That's why before the judge entered a search warrant to go inside your house, they have to make sure that the home is registered with the county of uh with the, with the office of deeds, right? Because when your home is registered, now it becomes a subject to the county. Now the police can go in and out of your house as much as they please. And it goes with the same thing with dealing with tax liens. The reason why a random motherfucker can put tax liens on your, on your property, that's because your home is registered. Anytime your vehicle is registered, you owe the county property taxes on a year-to-year -year basis. The same way when you pay uh, and get your vehicles registered with the state. When your vehicle is registered with the state, guess what? It is subject to the ta taxation of the county. It is a subject of the county. So when police decide they want to go inside your property and people are like, oh, you violated my damn rights. No, you got to understand one thing. When your car is registered and they can pull up that fictitious uh, address on, on file when they run your VIN number and once it's in their jurisdiction, yes, they can take whatever they want out, outside of the vehicle and bring it right out. See if you got guns, drugs, fentanyl, it does not matter. You're going to jail. You are subject to our jurisdiction. Now, say if a person was operating outside of the jurisdiction, say if you didn't have no contracts with the state, they would have to let you go. And what they would try to do is, it's something called a contractual waiver in order to gain personal jurisdiction. So many officers would talk you out of jurisdiction. Like the brother A6 Grand Time said, they ask you, you know, um, what's your name? You know, you, you admit that name, you kind of admit jurisdiction. But that's not really how they would establish jurisdiction in mainly territory. So they will always ask you where you live. How oh, where you live? What's Write down your address because that would give them territorial jurisdiction. So understand this. Everything operates uh, in a territory jurisdiction aspect. So when you guys run my videos and see the police ask me plenty of times, hey, what's your address? Actually, in the, in, the, in the beginning of that video, I didn't have my camera recorded, but the Asian and the white police officer who pulled me over when I was in Chicago, they asked me for the, the white guy. He, OK, he asked me for my address. The Asian, he was just on the side. That was his backup or whatever the case might be. So I told him I live in the United States of America. They went back to the cars. That's when I decided to record. So once I start, decided to record, within two minutes came back. They came back, hey, gave me my license, and I was free to go. But everything operates on a contractual basis. These sovereign citizen hate groups, I don't know what to say about you guys. I think y'all are very stupid. I'm not even going to lie to you. Because as much as y'all try to expose this group, now don't get me wrong, it's a lot of us that don't have the sufficient amount of knowledge and they don't know what, what's going on. That's why you will see a lot of videos of people getting snatched and thrown out the cars and they, the police uh, uh, handcuff them and take them to court. But these are the people who actually, if you want to ask me, they're not well equipped with understanding what's going on. They, not, they don't know about jurisdiction. They don't know about contracts. They don't know what a contractual waiver is. So I do give you that, right? I give those who hate sovereign citizens or people who want to stand up for their rights, I give y'all that. But as far as understanding the information and the complete breakdown of what it means to be within the jurisdiction or the territorial boundary, you guys don't have a fucking clue. And then also, let me explain something about the do not detain list. The do not detain list, right? It does not mean that you have a federal fucking watch. Let me explain this, right? Excuse my language. The do not detain list is given notice to every government agency or any police officer who pulls you over that you are, you know, it, it says it like this, uh, restricted, uh, do not detain or stop this individual based upon this notice. No law enforcement, uh, you know, authority shall be, you know, something like that. Right. So it, 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 it said just like this. Right. But the main purpose of this is it, it's just giving police notice that they don't have any jurisdiction. So many police officers will overstep and try to see, do you have a file with the secretary of state? Now, when they run your name and ID, I mean, no, your name and date of birth, if there's no file with the secretary of state, you have to go. Now you outside of their jurisdiction. So then their last, their, their last resort will be this. Let's get a contractual waiver. That means they trying to uh, uh, get you to confess jurisdiction by asking you for your address. Your social security number. You give it to them. Now they have a contractual waiver. Now they can prove residency. Now they can pull you inside the jurisdiction. State citizens are not subjects, but being a resident of the state, 
does make you a subject. So me and you guys, y'all are residents of the state that you live in. You're not a citizen of the de jure republic. And you're not operating outside of the territorial boundaries of the United States. Because the United States only exists in the fictitious aspect. So if you say you live on 123 Main Street, you subject yourself to the territorial jurisdiction. Read, watch my videos. Oh, and the reason why I was arrested two years ago, right? I was arrested because I didn't know about it. So when the, when the, when the police came inside the room, no, when a nurse came inside the room, she brought the pen and paper, right? So when she brought the pen and paper, the police in the beginning asked her, asked her, hey, get his address, because that was the way they was going to pull me in. At first, I did not know what a contractual waiver was. I didn't know what it means. I didn't know. I didn't understand it. So now I do. And I still beat the case. I beat the case and I gave jurisdiction and all the evidence was against me. It's just the power of the most high and it's also just the, the power of just having wisdom. So a lot of you guys who, who go against us, y'all don't have a damn clue. And also, we're going to continue to prosper. We're going to continue to grow. We're also going to continue to expound and teach the people who are lost. Because remember, it's a lot of them, but it's hell of us. It's a lot of people that want to seek this information. It's a lot of people that want to escape the system. It's a lot of people that don't want to be a subject to this jurisdiction. It's a lot of people who, who don't want to just live a simple day-to-day -day life and not knowing what the heck going on. They're just people who are curious. This is the problem. You got these dem democratic mad people who, who, who even trying to go against the curiosity of people. So the man can't even be sovereign no more. If a person decides, hey, you know, um, I want to bear arms without having a license. There's nothing in the Constitution in the Second Amendment that says an exception. You know what an exception is? That means something that's added to, right? Or unless, right? Check this out. Check this out. It's nothing like say, let's read, let's, let's break down the Second Amendment. Uh, you know, you have the right to keep and bear arms, right? Shall not be infringed, right? But it's not saying unless you have a license required by the state or unless you are a convicted felon or unless you have a certain amount of ammunition in a clip. That doesn't say that in the Constitution. There's no exceptions in the Constitution. There's no add-ons to the to the Second Amendment. So when the state add on to their provisions or their statutes, then you would deem it as unconstitutional. Now, let me explain this to you. This is what a lot of people don't know. Every court knows this, but the average person don't know. It's something in the Constitution called the Supremacy Clause. The Supremacy Clause are, is an Article 2 of the Constitution, and it states this. It's a... Um, any state law or federal law that conflicts with the Constitution or the laws of the United States um, shall be um, shall be void. It shall be void. So pretty much any time a person wanted to make a challenge to a state statute and deem it to be unconstitutional, they would use a law called the Supremacy Clause because the Supremacy Clause specifically specified that if any law conflict with the Constitution. So let me explain this. If a person didn't have, if a person had a gun, right? And he, uh, if a person had a firearm and he didn't have a license, right? And say if he was in a state that requires a license, but that would be a violation of the person's Second Amendment due to the supremacy clause that there was no exception to the Constitution that gives that terminology. So a lot of these judges in the Supreme Court, they're not even making, you know, they're not even making rulings on this. And also, being a convicted felon was never an exception in the Constitution, in the Second Amendment. I'm going to tell you why. Because even when the Second Amendment was ratified, it was still a such thing as, as, as called, being called a convicted felon. So back then, in the 1800s, you still could have been a convicted felon. But even a convicted felon would still have his right to keep and bear armed. It wasn't until 1967 when they ratified and they made it a law within the state statute that... Um, that it was wrong for a person who was a convicted felon to possess a gun. But then they made tighter restrictions on the Second Amendment because they also did some bullshit like they want to say, oh, you don't got a license in certain states. And like everything, I feel as though a lot of people need to wake up and they need to understand what's going on and they need to understand the territorial jurisdiction. Once you guys understand the territorial jurisdiction and you guys understand the contracts that you have with the state and you eliminate and ratify that, you win. That's that's how you really operate in the private. You really want to understand that aspect. So once, once you understand that, you all good to go. But for the meantime, for you guys who hate us and hate our movement and hate what we stand for, 
fuck it, you know, because we're going to keep thriving. We're going to keep winning. I just feel sorry for y'all. Y'all brainwashed. I'm out.